Hello. Welcome to Fund or Fail, the interview show about tabletop games that are backed by people like you. And Fund or Fail is part of the Indie Plus Network and adheres to the standards of that community. If you love independently created tabletop role-playing games, check us out on Google+. In Fund or Fail, I will be bringing on a creator for a project that is currently available for funding it or backing at the time of recording. This may be through Kickstarter, Indiegogo, Patreon, or many other fundraising platforms. If you're looking for a project to back, or if you're looking at this project in particular and want a little bit more information, then you're in luck. I may or may not have backed these projects, and it's my hope that this interview aids you, the viewer, with your funding decision for this project. If you have questions about this project, and you're watching this Hangout on Air now, I have enabled the question and answer. If you ask a legitimate question of the creator, once my gamut of questions have completed, and if that topic has not been covered, I'll ask them your question. So please do get those questions in. Now, to put the next creator to the question. Tonight's guest is Jacob Wood. Jacob's current project is Monster Kart Mayhem, a family-friendly kart racing game. The funding for this project ends on Monday, April 14th, 2014 at 2.59 a.m. Eastern. This is Jacob's second Kickstarter project. Jacob has backed 35 other Kickstarters. Welcome to Thunder Fail, Jacob. Hello, and thank you. It's good to be here. Good. Thank you for coming on. Now, let's go ahead and, and chat about the games that you've made. What other projects have you managed before? So I've uh, successfully run one Kickstarter project before for a cyberpunk fudge-based game called Cypunk. Um, and in addition to that book, which is my um, largest project to date, I've done several smaller RPGs, several through um, different contests. Um, Colors of Grey, a heist game uh, where you literally just play thieves who are out to steal things. And um, I'm currently working on a project of multiple small uh, Pathfinder supplements called Alliterative Amusements. And I've also recently begun doing freelance layout work. So I've um, done a book for Dreamscard Press for Lords of the Night, a vampire-themed Pathfinder project. And I'll be doing layout for Time Heroes, a fate-based game coming up soon. All right. Jacob, tell me about Monster Cart Mayhem. What is it? Monster Cart Mayhem is a family-friendly, fudge-based role-playing board game. Uh, it's kind of a mouthful, but basically what that all means is that it's a game for everybody, and it um, kind of takes storytelling sensibilities from role-playing and the fudge-based mechanics and kind of packages them into a more uh, user-friendly board game box. Uh, well, I shouldn't say box. Um, to get started is going to be more of a print-and-play sort of uh, book, um, like a role-playing game. But you'll create your own monsters or use any of the pre-generated monsters uh, that come with the game, and you'll be able to print out maps and tokens and cut those out and move them around the board. Uh, there are player aids and mats uh, similar to a board game that you can print out. Um, but at the same time, you're supposed to really get into telling a story along with your race. Um, so it's a bit of a mashup, really. I just want to ask you a quick question, Jacob. You keep mentioning print and play and PDF. Uh, is there no physical product whatsoever with this Kickstarter? The goal is to have a physical print-on-demand book if we reach the $4,500 stretch goal. Um, so with that, we would have the core game, four adventure packs, and a print-on-demand book. Um, if we're not able to reach that $4,500 goal, I may still be able to do a print-on-demand, but it's going to be a much smaller package. Okay. Now, Monster Cart Mayhem, why are you making this thing? Um, I'm making it because it was so much fun to make. Um, it was originally an adventure design contest entrant at RPG Geek several years ago, and... Um, Originally, I had difficulties coming up with a concept for that adventure design contest. And one night, my wife, um, as we were going to sleep, she kind of started talking in her sleep, and she mentioned something about 
Bigfoot in a sedan. And I had to kind of wake her up and ask her for more details because that sounded incredible to me. I just I immediately had this uh, image of Bigfoot with his head sticking out of a sunroof and his arms kind of reaching in through the windows to grab the steering wheel. And um, No sooner than that did we have uh, several different characters. We had Abominable Snowman driving an ice cream truck and Frankenstein's monster driving a monster truck. So we were coming up with these monster and car kind of combinations that were really wacky. And uh, the next morning I cranked out a contest entry for a game called Monster Cart Mayhem. And it was just a little fudge-based adventure at the time. And uh, I had so much fun working on it that I decided it needed to be play-tested and polished and uh, converted into a full-fledged game of its own rather than just a set of racing rules for uh, fudge. And so basically I wanted to show off all of the fun that I had designing the game and release it for everybody else to be able to play. Okay. I'm still having a little trouble visualizing it, so finish this sentence for me, Jacob. Mm -hmm. I would dig Monster Cart Mayhem because I like playing... What? I like playing Mario Kart, board games, role-playing games, any sort of light-hearted theme. Um, the, conceptually, it's kind of Mario Kart the board game. Um, you're, it's designed to put you and several other racers against each other in sort of a wacky kind of race. Um, the race course is out to get you. The other players are out to get you. You can grab power-ups and use those against each other. Um, and so it's sort of a competitive role-playing game. Um, and uh, if you like any of the... If the sound of any of those things appeals to you, then uh, Monster Kart Mayhem is going to be a great fit. And it would also be a great fit for anybody who is... Um, interested in playing sort of a, a light-hearted game with their family, maybe family members who aren't into role-playing games but do enjoy the occasional board game. Um, and it's also good for anybody who enjoys a tactical game uh, because there's a lot of strategy involved with when you attack each other, when you uh, use a power-up, um, and how you sort of move along the course. So there's a lot of, um, I think it has a pretty broad appeal. Now, one of the things that like Mario Kart and, and other uh, games of that, that type uh, market heavily on is the idea that anybody could win at any time. And it, the tension happens at the last second there. What have you done with Monster Kart Mayhem to try to emulate that? So in Monster Kart Mayhem, pretty much everything is out to get you. Um, from the other players to the race course itself. And Time and again through playtesting, we've seen that um, really right up to the very last moment, it could be anybody's game. Um, from the very get-go, the rolling hills, um, if you're not careful, they might roll over and squash you flat. So just from the start, you need to move your character in such a way that um, they're not going to be kind of banged up from the terrain. And all throughout the course, there are different um, areas that you'll go to, and they have different terrain effects. Kind of like in Mario Kart, where you have the Rainbow Road or the Ghost House, where you might fall into the little pits. There's always something that's going to be in your way. And those things are as much of a part of the game as attacking each other or trying to um, shoot piranha launchers and mud pies at each other. Um, every little thing that can be done to stop one another can be done in Monster Kart Mayhem. And so you have to pick and choose um, who you're going to attack, when you're going to attack them, and you're also going to have to get a little bit lucky to not be completely destroyed by the freaky forest or the scary swamp as you drive through them. And so all the way up to the end, it's it could be anybody's game. Nice. Now, you said before that this was originally a contest entry, mm -hmm. um, and you're, you're polishing the text now for this release. How, how far along is the book? Is it fully written? The book is completely written. Um, in fact, the core book and four adventure packs are completely written. 
Um, I'm still working out a little bit of playtesting. Um, so some of the text is still subject to change as we incorporate feedback, but um, the entirety of the text is available online on my website, and any of the backers um, are able to download the Adventure Pack text as well. Um, so there isn't anything about the game that's going to be uh, majorly overhauled going forward, and it's just a little bit of playtest tweaking that still needs to go into it. Now, uh, you said it was part of a contest, so it must have been reviewed. Where could I find reviews about the game, at least that draft of it? Um, there's a session report at rpggeek.com uh, written by a man named Alex Nguyen, and he talks about how um, he and his family sat down to play a game and kind of the, their experiences with it. Do you have an editor lined up for the project? Um, yes. So Mitch Williams is one of the um, editors who worked on Cypunk with me. And he's offered to come back and give it another go. And I've also been working with Fraser Nyland, um, who has been doing editing for my alliterative amusements projects. And uh, we're working on a deal with him as well. So we've got editors and artists, and uh, I'll be doing the layout. OK. Uh, now, Bradley K. McDevitt is doing the art. How much of that is complete? Sure, so Bradley K. McDevitt is doing the art for the core book and for two of the adventure packs. And Melissa Gay, um, who I also worked with on Cypunk, will be doing two of the other adventure packs, two of the four. And uh, about 40% of the core book is complete. We have four monsters and the logo, uh, which are all visible on the Kickstarter page. And um, we need to complete the rest of the art, so it's several different characters some filler art, um, a cover piece, and some of the uh, different power-up graphics. Um, after that, the art for the Adventure Pact is not yet complete, although Melissa Gay is working on a special piece for the Mermaid Adventures Adventure Pack, and uh, I hope to have that finished before the end of the Kickstarter campaign to show off to everybody. Neat. Uh, you also, I think, in the Kickstarter mentioned Camp Myths, so it seems like you've got a lot of crossover with the stuff that Eloy LaSanta is doing with his uh, Third Eye games, right? Absolutely. So Eloy has been generous enough to allow me to use both Mermaid Adventures and Camp Myth as different um, settings for race courses. Um, so Mermaid Adventures is a stretch goal that we're working on now, and that's his um, any nominated RPG of Undersea Fun. And uh, Melissa Gay was the artist on that, so I've asked her to come and do the art for Monster Cart Mayhem as well. And she's also um, worked on Camp Myth, and she'll be doing the, advent the animation for um, the Camp Myth adventure also. And I've also worked with uh, Chris Lewis Carter, who is the author of Camp Myth, and we'll actually be on our Thursday evening um, doing a game with me and Chris Lewis Carter and hopefully Eloy Vesanta if he's able to make it. Um, running through the Camp Myth scenario. So there's definitely a lot of crossover with him. I really enjoy Eloy and his games, and he's, I'm really glad that he's been able to allow me to use his uh, different properties. Have you envisioned a part-time gods or a Wujing? Uh, <laughs> I don't think those fit quite as well, but maybe you could... They don't fit quite as well, but you know what? Ninjas on motorcycles would be kind of cool. That's true. That's Actually, true. come to think of it, um, another Portland um, game designer has done a game called Moto Bushido, and that might make an amazing Monster Kart Mayhem race course adventure pack. I think you'd have to up the age limit on that one, though. Maybe a little bit. All right, so let's let's hit you with the the hard question here, Jacob. Uh, as of this recording, you've you've raised a thousand ninety nine against your goal of a thousand, right? But what happens if this project fails? If the project fails, if you can't del deliver a polished, complete book to the backers, what happens? If the project were to somehow completely fail overnight, um, at the very worst, we have a fully ready to play beta document that everybody still gains access to. That's the absolute worst case scenario. If I were to die tomorrow, people would still be able to play the game. Um, in my personal worst case scenario, 
um, if for some reason the art were not able to be completed by Bradley, I would still have um, a fallback to work with. Um, Melissa is an amazing artist, and she's been able to step up. Um, and if for some reason both of them were to fall off the planet, there are still other amazing artists out there. And I would be able to find somebody to at least finish the book and get a PDF out there. Cool. What's the best possible outcome for the time that you, you have remaining? You've got 19 days to go as of the recording this. What In your mind, what's the best possible outcome for you right now? The best possible outcome is that everybody gets a chance to see the project and enjoy the game. So I'm aiming for that $4,500 uh, Monstrous Edition goal where I can put all of the different adventure packs into one book. And uh, But more than just the money, I would like the, the people. So if 4,500 people pledged $1, that would be the best case scenario because... I want as many people as possible to be able to play and enjoy the game and to be able to bring it to their friends and family and to be able to share it with people. Um, so really the best case scenario would be for everybody to talk about the game and to share it with their friends and to play it and to enjoy it. Cool. Now, Jacob, this, this is kind of off book here, but mm -hmm. I'm a little curious. Why did you go with Fudge? Because you know all the cool kids like Fate, right? You've heard <laughs> Um, I I love Fudge because it's so flexible and because it was kind of my first exposure to that whole style of system. And really, um, the gifts and fault system of Fudge um, translated very well to the perks and quirks um, mechanic of Monster Cart Mayhem. And I don't think I could have shoehorned aspects into the system as well as the gifts and faults worked. Um, otherwise, we have the the fudge dice and the trait ladder, and uh, that's really where the resemblance kind of ends. Um, it doesn't have hit points, for example, or a, a wound track. It doesn't use different types of scale for different sized opponents, all of the nitty-gritty things that fudge is capable of. But I did take the the core aspects of it, and we're able to put that into the mechanics that, that kind of fit a board game style of play. And there are different tweaks to Fate that I could have made, but I think Fudge was just a better fit. Good answer. All right. I thought I would, I would get you on that one. <laughs> All right. Well, again, this is Monster Cart Mayhem. That's Cart the K. Uh, this is Jacob Wood and is for currently on Kickstarter as of this recording, which is March 25th, and will be going for 19 further days. He is looking for more pledges to be able to unlock and, uh, and get up to the 4,500 goal. Uh, so please do check it out. And uh, it does not appear that we got any questions. Let me do one last check here to see if we got any live questions. Okay. It does not appear that we had any questions, so... Jacob, I really appreciate you uh, coming on to Fund or Fail and giving us some of your time, and I wish you the best of luck with the rest of your funding project. For sure, and thank you so much for having me. It's been great.